right, so here's the second video of this tutorial for the Shore Troopers. So now let's take a look at these Shore Troopers up close. Are we blind? Deploy the garrison! No, Director Krennic, I am not blind. Let's go take a look at those paintings. Let's get into this video. So last time we left off with showing you off the priming of the miniatures. Here we have both of these units of shore troopers. If you see, the priming did a really good job of covering the entire base with all of our sand, and it just makes the, all of the model look like an entire piece like it should have been there. Let's get to the painting. We're gonna be doing a base coat of Zandri dust. For the legs and boots, Gorthor brown. And we have our black just to tidy things up. So let's start with the Zandri dust first. We're going to be mixing this on my wet palette and adding a bit of water to really thin the paint down. So we'll be applying this base coat on the armor, starting with the boots. We will also be applying this to the main torso, armor, the shoulders, the arms, and the helmet. Making sure not to get the boots or the pants as that is the light brown color. Here we're applying it to the torso armor. Moving on to the shoulders and arms, we'll be starting to paint these now with the base coat. Try your best to avoid the cracks in the arms where the elbows are, the underside of the gloves, and the hand in general, as there's just a little small armor piece on the back side of the hand. We can always go back over it later if you get some in those areas with black. When applying the paint to the helmet, I'm using a larger brush for the top and sides in the back of the helmet. I'll be switching to a smaller brush for the better detail on the front of the helmet, ensuring to not get where the facial eyes are or where the nose goes down towards the neck, that breathing apparatus.
When applying to very small edges where you don't want to get paint on the inside, I usually turn the brush on its side and drag it down the high crest point. This is a lot easier than using the tip of the brush where you risk getting that bright color where you want that darkness and black color at on the mask. So this finishes up our first model. If you look, we have part of the boots, the chest, the arms, and the helmet. We'll now move on to a time lapse of the rest of the models. Enjoy! This is the longest part of the basing method as the majority of the armor is covered up by this one color. After this, other steps will go quicker, but this is a much needed step. I was pretty happy with where the models were at, so let's take a closer look at these. Let's begin adding our Gorthor Brown to the pants and the bottoms of the shoes. We also want to make sure and water this paint down a little bit so it spreads easier and doesn't clump up on the pants as it's very wrinkly looking, and we want to keep that detail. If you guys want to see a video on how to put together a wet palette, it's very simple, and I can show you that at another time.
for the short trooper heavy and the main leader they have these skirts on the back side of them so this is the area where you just want to try and push your brush up as best you can and just kind of spread it around but try not to get it on that skirt but if you do we're always going to be going back over that with a different color This finishes up the first model, including the pants and the bottoms of the boots. I was pretty happy about this. And we'll now be moving on to some more time-lapse footage for the rest of the models. After finishing these models with the brown, we'll now display them here. We'll get a closer up look here in just a moment. The models look pretty good where they're at as far as basing goes. We are now ready to go on to the next step of painting. We are now going to go over the other details with a black. This includes the footing where I might have got that lighter brown color on the base of the model, any cracks and crevices, any colors on the guns, just making sure and going back over and touching up what I might have messed up on, which is okay to mess up with. I do it all the time. so. Don't feel like this needs to be perfect right now. Just about finishing up the details with the black as touch up and this first model is now complete. We'll go on to some more time lapse with the rest of the models for black. Let's move on to the next step of base painting. We have a LaTeX blue here and corn red 
that will be doing for the shoulders and the armor in just a moment, as well as Moot Green and Arzurius Purple. I also have another set of Shore Troopers that I had Troll Slayer Orange and Flash Gets Yellow. So we have a total of three Shore Troopers that we'll be doing. So that red is gonna be going on the edge of that armor, where the blue is gonna be going on the shoulder, the back side of the skirt, and the chest piece. Again, we have a green going on the shoulder pad, the chest piece, the purple on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and get started. I decided to go with the blue as this was going to match our movie colors for the Shore Troopers. So this is just starting with the shoulder pad on the left arm. And I'm just going to do the top side of it. Try not to get the bottom part of that shoulder pad. Here I am applying the blue to the chest piece and it's just going to be to the raised edges, kind of like that upside down Y part of their armor. Now this may not be movie centric, but I am going to be applying this blue color to the back side of the skirt as it just makes the model pop a little bit more rather than just having it be all tan. It looks pretty good in the end. I am trying to make a straight line on the wrist portion of the armor here, the forearm. And I'm going to go all the way around the arm. So what I do best to try and make a straight line is pull my brush towards my body. I have it in a straighter line, not on the ends of the bristles of the brush, but I'm just pulling it towards my body as I go around the model. And I usually try to thin it on my thumb, do a one pull on the nail of my thumb to make sure I have not too much paint, but enough paint to make a nice line as we can always go back over it.
starting to finish up this one model, you can take a closer look here at that line, the chest piece and the shoulder, and the back side of the skirt. I have pretty much everything I want to be colored on this, so I'll be moving on to the do the rest of the models in their own separate colors. Enjoy! As we finish up these models, let's take a closer look at them. So here we can see the green, the purple, the red, and the blue on the models. I really liked how these turned out, really separates the units. I do have that other group as well, but I'll show you that a little later. I am now using Skaven Blight Dinge to paint the mortars. I'm going to be using a gray on the side, the top, and then where the mortar launches from in front. I am now going to be painting the legs of the mortar in three different locations. I wanted to give more gray to it rather than just being plain black. The three mortars are now complete, but I'm going to add some rocks to the blue and the green group as the orange group has been done already. So just grab some of your super glue, whatever works for you. Wash your rocks if you pull them out of your backyard or if these are actually terrain rocks. And just apply a nice amount of glue and get those on the models. Choose different locations so it just makes it look a little bit more natural. We are now going to be going on to my favorite part of the painting process with base colors. We're going to be using Agrax Earthshade. Shake it up really well. And this is a wash that we're going to be applying over the entire model. It's a, a brown wash. And with this first model, before we go on to the time lapse, I'll show you how you want to apply it. Make sure not glump it up in certain areas. We're going to be starting from the top of the model and working our way down as we want gravity to work into the cracks and crevices. This really makes the model stand out, it gives us those shadows we want. Now this is very liquidy, so just kind of be generous with it. Move it around. If you get too much in the mask and the eye sockets, you can use your brush to get out the extra liquid and push it somewhere else on the model. Just really have fun with this step.
This finishes up the wash of the first model. As you can tell, it's wet still, but this is gonna dry and it makes it look really awesome. You can already tell all the details popping out. Pretty cool. So let's go on to the time-lapse for the rest of the models. As I mentioned before, this is one of the most fun and favorite steps in the basing process. This really gives those details. After you do one coat, you don't need to do more than that. Let it dry. Let's take a look at these up close now. Be careful not to choke on your aspirations, director. Yes. Yes, indeed. That finishes up this second video, you guys. Here's our short troopers. I look forward to doing our next step in our next video. Be sure to like and subscribe so we can see that third video, which will be going over the details and any extra highlights on the miniatures. Should really make them pop, so look out for that video next.